Coding for noobs. Coding for noobs. Coding for noobs. If you program in Excel for Mac 2016, you know that you can't send emails via VBA like you can in the Windows version. Generally, you would use SMTP protocol to be able to send emails through Excel. This presents a big problem if you want to be able to create custom emails based on the information found in individual cells. You want to be able to send personalized emails like saying, hi Jim, instead of hi there, like this. In order to make a workaround for this issue, we can utilize AppleScript to combine the email capabilities of the mail app with the data storing capabilities of Excel. Because maybe you're a small business owner or startup who can't afford Oracle software, or you're like me and you just don't like Windows-based computers. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to send personalized emails that include when a specific person is supposed to report for work. In the film production world, this would be called an individual's call time. So instead of the traditional method in which you just attach a worksheet, we can send each person their individualized call time. But before we get any further, one thing to note if you're trying to follow along with this exactly is there are a few eccentricities to data formats in Excel. Because if you just take the value of the person's call time from Excel as it currently stands, it will show up as a number with decimals. Here's an example. 1.30 a.m. becomes 0.0625. So to make a workaround for this, we can add apostrophes to the beginning of each time so that we tell Excel to store those values as text. Luckily, this apostrophe won't actually show up when we transfer those values to our emails. You can add this apostrophe two separate ways. I used a VBA for next loop, which you can see here. Or if you don't know VBA, you can use the concatenate function from Excel to add the apostrophe, then delete the preceding row. Okay then, back to why we're here. Let's go ahead and reference the three variables to get each of the values we want. The person's name, their email, and call time. Tell application Microsoft Excel and tell. We can see that the values for a person's name are stored within the first column. Set per name to value of column one, of row I, of sheet one, of active workbook as text. We'll get back to defining how we'll use that variable a bit later. Next, we'll create a variable to reference that email address to which we're planning on sending a personalized email. Then finally, our last variable will be the individual's call time. It'll be along the third column of the first index sheet. Now, as I'm sure you've been able to visualize, we'll need to loop through all the rows that contain data. The loop will need to run from the second to the 11th row. But if we wanna be able to make this more dynamic, we can create a variable which will reference the last cell of a given row. That way, if we add more data in later, we won't have to constantly tweak our code to indicate the last occupied cell. If you're familiar with VBA, this very closely resembles the rows.count.endXLUp.row method. We'll put the start of the loop just above the name variable and close it at the end of our subroutine so all three variables will change each time we run through the loop. Now let's get back to the mail application. We're going to define the properties of our new emails using a variable. Make new outgoing message with properties. Just a side note, if you're curious as to which properties are associated with the make new outgoing message command, we can reference the AppleScript dictionary for the mail app. I'll have the description up as a reference while we're writing the code. We'll first reference the content property, which is pretty much the body of the email. Content hi and space and per name. You create a space within text properties of the mail app exactly as it sounds. Type out space. Per name was that variable we created earlier which references a person's name. 
Then we'll use two returns, the literal equivalent of hitting the return button on our keyboard to begin the body of our message. Please report to set at and space and per time. Per time was that variable we defined above, which references the individual's call time. Then we'll add two returns to move us down again. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. The next property we'll look at is if we want the message pane to be visible or not. We'll put true for demonstration purposes. Then for our next property, we'll define our subject. It's been specified in our dictionary as text. Call sheet melancholia. Now I'll go ahead and set my message signature. It shows that we'll need to include the keyword signature. We'll define another variable which will reference the name of this signature. Mine is called regular. Use the same name as it appears in your mail app signature drop down menu. Set signatory to regular. Then we'll go down a little bit below and specify our signature. Message signature, signature, signatory. Cool. We're getting a lot closer. Since you can use multiple email accounts within the mail app, we now need to specify which one we want to use for this message. When we're writing the text to indicate which email we want to use, make sure to copy it verbatim to what you see in the GUI interface of the mail app, which is generally your first and last name, then put brackets around the email address. We'll create a property above our loop to define this. Property the sender, your name, brackets, email. We'll tell the new email variable to who we want to send this email. Tell new email to make new to recipients at end of recipients with properties name per name, address per email. That's it. Let's go ahead and run it now. We can cross-reference some of the emails to our spreadsheet just to check. And that's it. Thanks for watching.